Hey guys, it is Carl Brown, GuitarLessons365.com. I have a great song for you today. We're going to learn how to play Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day. Uh, so this one's got some unique things about it. Um, um, so I'm going to break it, the whole thing down for you, but all the guitar parts, even if there's a, there's a couple of guitar parts that are layered on, uh, overdubbed and, and stuff. So we'll take a look at all of them. Uh, but before I do it, please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell so you know when I release a new video. And please check out my guitar course. Uh, my, it's on my whole guitar academy that I have with all my guitar courses in it. Um, at guitarlessons365.com. You'll see the link in the description below. I cover a lot of things over there, and uh, we're doing some really great stuff. Got some big stuff coming, so hopefully you'll come and join the great community we already have over there. So I will see you there. All right, so let's start. We're in standard tuning here. Um, now, we obviously start the song with this little uh, tremolo effect. Oh, it's kind of, sorry. I didn't spend a lot of time dialing that in, as you can obviously tell. Um, but what is going on? If you have that that uh, kind of tremolo effect on there, you're going to be able. You're going to want to set it to like a kind of a square wave pattern, so it's very da, 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 uh, kind of very tight uh, rhythmic thing. It doesn't. It's not like a, a gradual dip in volume. So it just pulls the volume out. It's basically just taking your volume on and off. Uh, you can look at it that way. But uh, so that's what the effect is going on. And the chords are pretty much just this F power chord, the first fret of the low E string. And then the fourth fret. And then uh, we go over to the sixth fret of the A string, that power chord. So sixth fret up there on the A, eight on the D and the G. And then I take that same chord and move everything up one string. So it's based off the, the power chord based off the sixth fret of the low E. So. All right, now for the verse, then we have an acoustic guitar. I'm not gonna switch to acoustic here, it's just a, it's a, it's a pain. Um, so I'm just gonna show you what's actually going on with this acoustic. It is a capoed guitar, uh, and you'll also see the, I don't know the second guitar player that they have uh, playing with them live, which they always do, but he actually has his guitar capoed as well. So it's a standard tuned guitar that's capoed at the first fret. Um, so whether you want to be able to yeah, do that or not, doesn't matter. Um, so, but if you do capo at the first fret, you can play that chord progression the correct way, uh, which is after you just capo to the first fret, all you have to do is play, you know, compared to the capo, an E minor chord, then a G major, D major, and A major. So, uh, so this was what it would sound like, obviously, a, a, a half step low. So that's how it's performed, except it's with a capo, and then those chords in front of a capo. So a capo at the first fret. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can play it like I did in the intro, which is just, you know, have to do some bar chords. So if you want to do that, this is a F minor chord. So it's a full bar at the first fret, the third fret on the A and the D. Then what you want to do is move up to the um, fourth fret and add the fifth, uh, your, your middle finger there to the fifth fret on the G string, which like now makes it a major chord form. So we have minor, F minor, to A flat major. Then we're gonna go over to this E flat here. So E flat major chord, so it's sixth fret there on the A, eighth fret there on the D, G, and the B. And then finish it with that same major chord form that we did at the fourth fret, but at the sixth fret, which is the B flat major chord. So we have F minor, A flat major, B flat major, B flat major. Um, 
So that's how you're going to want to play it if you don't want to do the whole capo business. Um, but it does sound better with the capo because those open strings kind of have their own sound. It gives it a little bit, uh, a little brighter sound to it. So have an extra guitar player with a capo, that'll work. All right, now from there, um, we have some fills that happen over that. So it sounds like this. All right, so all that is is an octave. We're going to play the fifth fret on the D, and then the eighth fret there on the B. Now you can pick this, you can pick the low note with the string with the pick, and then the, the B string uh, with your middle finger. Now I will say, I'm playing these octaves here. Later, we're going to be playing them up here. But I. I'm going to play them here because these are a little bit brighter, and then during the verse it sounds a little bit brighter. So I'm basically doing them here right now. But later on when we have kind of like an octave solo section, I'll be playing them in a different area. But I'm just doing this because it sounds closer to it. So anyway, I'm, you can also pick the low note with your thumb and then the, and then the B string with your index finger. And I'm just kind of holding my uh, pick there with my uh, middle finger. That's what I do a lot. So, so anyway, you pick that octave, slide up one fret. Then what you do is come up to the eighth fret, so the eighth fret with your index finger, and then that pinky on the B string is at the eleventh fret. You're going to play that and slide up two frets, and then back down to where you started at the eighth fret. And then go back to that five, the, the fifth fret here, and slide it up a fret again. So we have this. And repeat. All right, so that's that little clean guitar thing, Phil, that you can hear over the verses. All right, so there we kick into uh, some uh, higher gain for the, the chorus sections. And Billy Joe Armstrong is just playing the standard tune guitar. And this is how he comes in with the chorus. <laughs> So that starts here at the um, a few hits of the B flat power chord here at the first fret of the A string. Then go up to the fifth fret. I'm mean, sorry, third fret. Hit that once, and then we start the actual chorus riff, which is that power chord at the fourth fret of the uh, A string. And a lot of times when he plays his power chords, he plays like with the pinky here, and then when he gets down to the lower notes, he lower strings, he plays it full three string power chord here like and they plays it like that so anyway so we have the fourth fret there on the a string and then over to the fourth fret of the low e power chord and then up to the e flat so this sixth fret there power chord off the a string and then down to the f power chord down here at the first fret of the low e string and just repeat those So the fourth time though, now we're going to do this, and here we're just going to jump to the third fret part of uh, the, so the third fret off the A string. Alright, so um, that's the full thing. So don't forget that little, that little intro thing, the little pickup. Damn it. Then it's into the proper course. Alright, so now out of the... Um, of course, we go back to the same verse with the same little octave um, melodies over it and the same chorus. Um, and then we get to this kind of octave solo. So this thing starts with just the, uh, you know, that uh, kind of versing.
And then right here, it jumps into the chorus riff. Um, so, and the, the chorus riff is played slightly different. So we have this. So this is underneath that little octave solo. All right, so basically the only difference was um, after you've played it through, you're starting or over the chord progression the third time. Instead of just strumming the chords, it just hits that first chord twice and stop, and then do the same thing on the next one. And then we go back to the strumming for the next two chords. And then now, the fourth time of playing through the chords, we do that same thing. Except, obviously, this is the last time through, so we're going to go to that C from there. All right, now, over that, we have this. So that's the start here at the 8th fret there, octave off the A string. So that's the 8th fret on the A, and then the 10th fret there on the G. So make sure all other strings are muted, so you can just strum across them. And then go up to 10, 11. So I'm, I'm calling out, we're still in the same octave shape, but I'm just going to call off the fret that the, your index finger is on. So we have 8, 10, 11, and then you're going to go to 13. And slide to 15, and then back down to 13. So this. And then we play 10, 11, again. and repeat. Do that. And that be the fourth time through. That's just going to that slide up, down to 13, and goes right back to that 15. And that kind of matches when it goes to that C chord underneath it. All right, so those are that is what's going on there with the, for the octave part. Um, so then we just go back to the verse again and back to the chorus. And you're going to hear those octaves kind of come in. So you'll still hear that same thing kind of coming in over that final chorus there. And those also kind of like... What is going on? Kind of holding that C chord to go into this uh, kind of the outro section, which is real, which is actually two guitars going here. And this outro section is probably my favorite thing that Green Riff that Green Day's ever played. I think it sounds really cool. Um, so kind of comes out of nowhere, but it's really cool. So we have what Billy Joe Armstrong is playing first, and then we have this little octave thing over it, which gives it its really eerie vibe. Um, so you really need both to make it sound correct. But it sounds like this. <laughs> So really cool, so you got to have a pretty wide vibrato on the notes. So you're going to start with this, the single note riff. So the first fret there on the low E string. So you don't want to play those power chords. It sound horrible. So it's just, you really want to shake the bottom of just a single note riff. So it's the first fret there on the low E string. And then go to the fourth fret there on the A. Up to six. And then down to five. 
So a lot of vibrato. And then down to the fourth fret on the low E. And then take it down to this, the E power chord. So here you can play an actual power chord. So it's a low E string, open, second fret there on the um, A, and you can just play the second fret on the D too. And repeat. So you basically do that four times, and the fourth time we have this different ending. So that different ending is here. When you get to that fourth fret there on the low E, you can play it as a full power chord. Hit it twice, and then that E power chord twice. And that is it. So what is going on with that is this. See how it kind of comes together. You can, uh, if I play this riff. So it kind of, it's what gives it this really kind of eerie quality. So all it is is this, uh, listen very close to the recording, you'll hear it, you might have missed it. So it's the eighth fret there on the A, 10th fret on the G. So that octave, just kind of let that ring while you're doing all this. And then when you get to the bottom, the low E string notes, that's when you do the that same octave, but from 11 to 7, and repeat. All right, and then it just at the end, the same thing, just with the octaves, the same little. So it just kind of follows what's going on down there. All right, so it is a great track. It's got some really cool stuff in it. Uh, it's really well put together. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys again soon for GuitarLessons365.com.